Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trimmed with red and weighing in at 227 pounds. He comes to us tonight from Jay, Oklahoma and brings a professional record of 45 victories against only two defeats with one draw and 39 of his victories are by way of knockout. In his career, he holds victories over Razor Ruddick, Pink Lynn Thomas, and Big George Foreman. And he has captured two championship belts from the WBO and the IBC. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing a two-time world heavyweight champion, Tommy the Duke Morris. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing black, trim with gold and red letters. He weighed in officially at 241 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold by defeating Razor Riddick Bow. And as a professional, he now has a record of 27 victories with only one defeat. And he has reigned as the world heavyweight title holder, a title he is on a mission to regain. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from East London, England, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Hughes. Okay. Okay. All right. Tommy. Morrison. All right. Listen up. If it goes right here. Tommy, right here is going to be all right. We've already gone through all the instructions. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? No. Any questions here? Let's get it on. These fighters are not so much at a crossroads as at an intersection, an intersection without any stoplights, and everybody is looking for a big collision. Yesterday, when we met with them, Lennox Lewis made a big point of telling us that he has learned since the McCall fight how to ease his way into a bout, not looking for the big punch from the outset. Tommy Morrison has made a big point of saying, I don't think I can outbox Lennox Lewis. I don't even think it's worth trying. But he did outbox George Foreman a couple of years ago, and there are some of us who still expect to see some of those in and out tactics. I think Morrison made a very good statement because with Lennox using this jab like he is, it's going to be very difficult for Morrison to outbox him. The weight that Lennox has added looks good. He is not too big. He's gained weight in all the right places. It must be mostly in his legs because I cannot tell from his upper body. His upper body looks good. Lewis trying to land the right cross has missed a couple of them so far. Morrison not able to open up and throw much yet as Lewis is keeping him at bay with the jab. You look at the size and strength of Lennox Lewis in there, Roy Jones. He presents as formidable a picture as there is in the heavyweight division. Yes, he's a very intimidating pitcher just looking at him for a person like Morrison. What I've noticed early in this fight already, guys, is that Lewis's jab is much more authoritative than we're used to seeing it. He's usually pawing it out there. He's trying to put some steam behind it now. Yes, but he can't get lackadaisical with it and slow it down because this is the best punch in boxing to counter a jab. Hard right hand by Tommy Morrison as he steps in and gets it across the top of Lewis's left shoulder. Which, which Morrison just tried to do. Lewis's old and most think bad habit is to leave the jab laying out there and measure his man with it. And the reason that they think this is a bad habit is because the best time to hit a guy, like I said, is when his jab is extended. More than two minutes into the round, Tommy Morrison has landed two counter right hands against Lennox Lewis's jab. But Lewis's jab has dominated the action so far. Morrison's left was blocked against Lewis's arms. The right hand got through again. If I were in Lewis's corner, I would be telling him to throw the straight right to the body zone. That would move Tommy Morrison's hand 
and that would create an opening for the right hand to the face. Lewis finding an inviting target for the jab so far. Has missed every time with the right hand, but Morrison is very aware of Lewis's right and flinches away from it when Lennox throws. Tommy has developed a small swelling under his right eye from that jab already. Another right hand miss as the round comes to a close, and a relaxed Morrison allows himself to go to his knees. Lewis pushing him on the back of the head. Keep working a jab. You want to find him. He's, shot. he's really cautious. He felt the power, and he's not coming in. He's staying back. Just keep working a jab. Everything going to happen. He may be getting away from him, but sooner or later, you're going to get close enough. You'll figure out instead of taking it over, you get close enough. Maybe you take it right on up underneath. But keep working the left hand. He can't get his attack going because he's felt the power of the jab. So let's work on the jab. Everything will fall in place. It's a little high at times. After you throw a combination, you make sure you come out low. Tell him out you're going to see that right hand coming all night long. All right? Let's take it away from him by using more jabs, more sevens. Double up on your seven, look for the body. Double up on your seven, look for the body. A little more speed. Lewis is trying to do two things. One, you see his right hand is high. He's ready for the great left hook that Morrison does have. And secondly, it's that jab. He's trying to force an opening rather than merely wait for an opening as he has often done in the past. There he was holding the left hand out there as he tried to land the right hand over the top, but he threw 52 snapping jabs in round number one. And that kind of activity can only be a product of Emmanuel Stewart's reworking of Lennox Lewis's fighting style. That's the right hand that Lennox throw right then that I'm saying he should throw to the body. That way, later in the fight, if he starts to tire, Morrison will tire too from these body shots. If he punches to the body at all, Roy, it's a big step forward. One thing we've noticed in Lewis's past fights, he seems to forget constantly to go to the body. <laughs> Morrison seems to be forgetting that same thing right now, though. He should be working Lewis's body as well. He's the shorter fighter here. For him to have an advantage, he should throw more body shots that can bring Lewis's hands down. Morrison almost sneaked the left hook past Lewis's right hand. It was partially blocked. Lennox Lewis beating Tommy Morrison to the punch with the jab. Tommy just hasn't gotten his jab going because Lennox's left hand keeps coming out. And if I were Tommy, I wouldn't throw many jabs at Lewis because Lewis is looking down over Tommy's left hand. If he throws a jab and leaves it out a second too long, Lewis will counter. Thunder with the right hand over the top. One thing I did like about Tommy is that in between the first and second round in the corner, Tommy was breathing long stride, and that's good body shot. Good body shot by Morrison, but he goes down, so score it a knockdown for Lewis. I thought it was a left hook. The fighters had their backs to us, so we couldn't tell. But if it was, it was a very short left hook. Fascinating exchange because Morrison seemed to be doing damage to the body, and all of a sudden he was on the canvas. It was a counter left hook. Right between his combinations, his big punches, which is what I told you earlier about the big punches that he throws. That's what happens to Morrison. Lewis just misses with a right hand, and now there's blood at Tommy Morrison's right eye. So the little left hook from Lennox Lewis that put Morrison down has apparently also cut his eye. Both Morrison. fighters more aggressive now. Morrison needs to move his head more. He makes himself a still target for Lewis. Lewis looking down can hit a steel target much, much easier than Tommy can looking up. Both fighters need more head movement. Right now, Morrison is the one who needs it most. Round two coming to a close. There was a knockdown in the round for Lewis. This is the best Lewis we've seen in a while. Much more measured, less wild, better footwork. Much better footwork. Okay. They call it a little left hook there. All right. No. Listen to what I'm saying. Let's. We're letting him fight his fight here because we're at the end of his punches. Okay. At right, this round, we got to pick up the pace. You got to start stalking. All right. Let's we check out and see that. 
what, uh, left hook that we thought was delivered inside. If it is, it's one of the most impressive punches we've ever seen Lewis land, although it just landed high on the head. But he wasn't even throwing those kinds of punches on most occasions before looking to throw that short left hook. They get a little lower. One thing oh about the combination God. that enabled a Marston to be hit was that he oh, thrown a double more. right hand, which left the right side of the face wide open for too long of a period of time. In the corner. Lewis also has that right hand up around his head like a gate, trying to block Morrison's way in with it. There's another good left hook by Lennox Lewis, and he's as he goes right after the the eye that he bloodied in the last round. The way he's throwing the hook is almost as though he's been watching some Roy Jones tapes or something. It's not that good, Roy. Morrison landed a straight right after the opening exchange, but Lewis still able to keep Morrison out at the end of his jab for the time being. Lewis must be careful when he right, throw the wild body. punch then. He shouldn't get wild because that's Tommy's game. Tommy needs to throw the wide punches because he's reaching up. The knockdown, of course, marked the 11th time in the decade of the 90s that Tommy Morrison's been down. There's another good left hook for Lennox Lewis. And if Morrison keeps standing out there and letting Lennox dictate the pace, you can count for a 12th knockdown because he will go down again. It's crazy to stand out there on the end of a tall man's punches. He has more leverage out there. It's harder for you to hit him from out there. And you're in his punching reach, and he is not in yours. So how is Tommy going to get inside? He has to move his head and start trying to make uh, Lennox throw decent punches so he can slip them and get inside. Once he gets inside, he has to stay inside. That right there is not the place for Morrison to be. So, so far, he has not been able to slip Lewis's jab. He's eating it. And as long as that's the case, he won't get inside. Well, he, that, there he's inside. He can block the jab, go in, but he can't throw two and three punch combinations because Lennox is doing something smart. He's punching between Morrison's punches, which is what I told you would be a problem right, for him. Back. Let him go, Lennox. Let him go, Tommy. Let's get the Lewis landed a downward canted right hand there. Not full power. If I were Morrison, I would be content with that right there, getting one body shot at a time, hoping to tie Lennox in the later round. Hey, 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 looking to nationalize officiating in the sport. He says bringing in a Nevada referee for this fight is one step in that direction. I can tell you one more thing that I can see. Boston is getting a little closer to Lennox. This I means that Lennox head. may be getting a little tired in the leg department. Morrison, I thought, landed a big but grazing right in that exchange. Watch the heads in there. Both of that neck. Lewis, come on. Third round Close coming to a close. Yeah, Relatively cautious Tired. round for Lewis. you can do. I'm going to leave it up to you. If you want to, you can almost just walk him down and right inside on him now because you got control of him inside. Walk him down if you want to with short shots and keep making him move back. Take the rest of his strength. You don't have to worry about no shots. You can walk him down and stay with short shots there and push him back all while you're punching. Because your punches are much shorter than his punches are. Also. You got to make it happen. Tell me you're high on me. You're high on me. I need you lower. I need you low. You got to sit down on that hip, get the weight on the ball of the front foot. All right? Head movement as you're coming in. Constant head movement. Coming in, head movement? Yes. Low hips, ball of the foot. That's the way. Something, if you want to walk him down, just put your hands up tight and walk straight to him. He can't.